it's uh, Chris from Fellowship of Christian Athletes doing another interview here. I have uh, my good friend Manny Perez. Uh, he's out in uh, Florida right now. Um, he's going to share a little bit about himself, but I want to remind you guys as we start that uh, the FCA's mission is to see the world impacted by Jesus Christ through the influence of coaches and athletes. So that's what we're doing here. That's why we're doing these interviews, spending time with some godly athletes who love Jesus. So, hey, Manny, if you don't mind, introduce yourself to our listeners out there. <clears throat> Yeah, uh, my name's Emmanuel Perez. I played for Cal Poly Men's Soccer. It's a Division One program in California. Um, my family, I have an uh, older brother and a younger sister, uh, blessed with like two healthy parents. Uh, I grew up in a Christian household. Uh, you know, I went to church and all, all that stuff. Uh, went to a Christian school and uh, basically, you know, I was living like the like the normal Christian life, but I don't know. I wasn't as serious as I am now. And I don't know if it's just because of the maturity in my life, but as my life went on, like I got like a lot of difficulties and stuff like that. And uh, I had to mature really quickly. And like, I hit some low points, I hit some high points. And uh, I found out like in the best signs of my life, I was always putting God first. Uh, and even through the tough things, like when I had those tough times, I was able to, to find joy through those tough times because I knew that God was in control and then sometimes I didn't and uh, that's when I would be like you know you can get like sad or depressed but now when I go through difficulties I don't even I don't even feel anxious really because I know that God's in control and I think that applies to my life and everything not just sports or work or anything it's just I can apply it to my whole life so yeah that's awesome man um thanks for that encouragement right there at the beginning that's good um so just as you're going through life here and, and you're stuck in this state of quarantine, how are you getting by? What are you doing to kind of cope with being stuck in at home, not having your spring season? Um, yeah, it's definitely like not having a spring season was a, seems tough, but if you look at it in a different way, you know, you have more time to prepare now for your preseason. So that's kind of how I'm looking at it. And uh, I started this thing I heard a while ago. There's 31 Proverbs. Uh, so that's one for each day of the month. You read it every, one day every day. You read the pro, you read Proverbs 12 times a year. So you get wiser. So I start my day off every day with, uh, with coffee. And uh, I, read the, I read one chapter of Proverbs. Um, that just gets me going in the morning. Um, I have a good morning routine. Um, getting into stocks a little bit, trying to make some money. So, All but. Right. Sometimes, you know, I wake up like right on the edge when the stock market's opening or something like that. And I always like, I want to run to my computer and see like what's going on. But I always catch myself and it's like, I got to put God first. You know, mm. it's not about money. It's not about sports. It's not about anything. So I always make sure I always read my Bible first. Then. So, and then I'm going, yeah. And then, so I want to always like emphasize like God first. And I don't want to forget that. So that's why I like to start my day with the Bible and I end it with the Bible as well. Um, I'm going to the book of Ezekiel just for like my own personal Bible study. So I read that before I go to sleep at night with like a tea. Um, but yeah, then, then I can't really don't, I can go outside a little bit cause I'm in Florida. So I go for runs like in the middle of the day. Um, okay. and then my workouts, there's like no gyms are open. So I'm just doing, you know, calisthenics, like handstands, uh, dips, a whole bunch of home workouts. So that's kind of how I'm dealing with it. Um, spiritually and uh like physically yeah yeah those yeah. things tend to go hand in hand well um i mean i know a little bit about you you're, you're a soccer player um can i ask the question for our listeners when did you fall in love with the sport of soccer oh gosh um probably when i was like eight like i, I just i just remember being at the fields and uh, my parents like practice would end i would get there early be playing practice would finish just stay playing with my friends and like be the last one there and my mom's yelling at me like we gotta go home like you know we gotta cook dinner get ready for school tomorrow the next day and uh, I just never wanted to leave I felt like I never got tired so I can like I loved it and I still do like that's the only reason I can get up early in the morning and do what I do it's just I love it so yeah it makes me happy that's great that's great yeah what's what's your favorite part of the sport of soccer Oof. I don't know I guess uh uh, the challenge and the like it allows you to be creative you know like there's I'm not like the biggest athlete 
or anything like that, but uh, it just makes me have to think, and it's just made me a better person in my whole life because I have to do things a little bit smarter than some people or just think differently. I don't even have to be smart, just differently. Like, what would these people not do? And then try to figure out different ways to accomplish the same goal. And uh, that allows me to be creative, and I can see it kind of like bleeding into like my life uh, when I don't know if something just doesn't go as planned, and like I come up with like a solution pretty quickly, or like I'm like, how can I fix this? Like just that idea of like how do I fix this? How do I fix this? So, like I'm problem solving, and it's kind of it's a cool challenge, and yeah. like I like to I like to rise to the challenge. That's great. That's yeah. uh that's always fun about sports, right? That creativity, trying to figure out, there's no one way to do it, but there's a uh, different yeah. way that we can come out to victorious in the end. Um, so I want to ask you, what's your greatest moment in sports, in soccer? What's been the highlight of your career so far? Well, there's two. So like as like an accomplishment, like as a team, like, and for me, um, we won, my team won the Dallas Cup, which is like the biggest like club tournament in uh in america and i scored the only goal in the final it was a free kick nice. so it was really cool it was when i was young so it wasn't like super like crazy but uh it, it was a cool experience like winning that tournament and like being able to contribute and help my team win um but like just the places i've been able to train the teams i've been involved with and then being able to train with like those professional teams from like a young age like showing myself that like I am able to do these things and I can keep up with these guys but you know it's not all about just like how good you are it's like how much effort do you put in and stuff like that so like it's definitely like a cool like accomplishment to be able to like get invited to train with these professional teams but like now I want to take it to the next step and say like yeah I, I've trained with them and like I've shown myself I can do it but now I want to you know I want to make it I want to go to that next step so which uh, professional teams have you trained with prior to coming to Cal Poly? So I've trained with uh, FC Dallas's uh, first team when I was, I started when I was 15. Um, so that was a pretty crazy experience. <laughs> I was so young and those guys were huge, um, but it was fun. And then I got to train with um, uh, the Philadelphia Union, their first team. I uh, worked my way up my first season to the first team and uh, um, I had to get surgery. So that, that kind of sucked. Uh, but you know, I think uh, it led me to where I am now and my relationship with God. And then, you know, I fought back, worked my way back up to the first team and was able to train with them again. So I was like consistently able to work my way back up at those like high level organizations. So, okay. What's your yeah. lowest point in your career? Oof. Um, there's like, there's like two. Okay. So when I was young, I was, uh, I was getting really successful at a young age and, uh, that can get to your head and you can think, Oh, I'm doing it on my own. Like I don't need God or anything like that. Like that can happen. And, uh, I don't think I was saying I don't need God, but I was just putting myself and saying, Oh, it was me that did this all on my own. And, uh, like I got humbled really quickly. Um, so I was, I was on a good team. I was on the net national team and then I went to the new team. I went to the New York Red Bulls, their youth Academy. And their, their, their players were good. Everyone was good. And, uh, I started off really well. And then, something just happened and I just I was messing up all the time in practice and like I was like 14 yeah I was like 14 and uh like I just had so much pressure on myself like I moved from home um, and I just kept messing up and I had always been a starter my whole life and I didn't even play like any games I played like 30 minutes like my whole time there I was there for like four months so that was a very like low point but it was a humbling experience and I told myself never again well like I think that I'm bigger than the team or I'm better than anyone else. Like, it's not about that. Uh, it's about you know, putting in the work and like accomplishing the goal as a team. And uh, I told myself, I never let like any success I have get to my head and putting God first definitely allows that. It makes it a lot easier to not let it get to your head. Yeah, for sure. So you left home at the age of 14. Yeah. And so you yeah. moved to New York <laughs> at 14 years old, left Florida out there. How did that affect your family and um, just your faith? Oh, it was weird. Um, never done laundry before. Never really cooked my meals. <laughs> I go home, go oh, move right. away. And my parents stayed here. So I did do all that on my own. Uh, I learned quickly to relationship not being with your parents. Like, uh, 
definitely like grow apart and it's not because of you know any lack of effort or anything it's just you know you're busy you're like I'm cooking my own food my parents are working you know they're raising my sister as well uh, you know I have I had to do online school so it's like there were still days were full of stuff uh, so it's definitely hard like relationship wise but it was worth it and then through like my time leaving like there was ups and downs in my relationship where like I had a little bit more free time a relationship with God and uh, had some free time and maybe I like felt like a little bit of a calling like oh I need to be doing this you know like but maybe it was a little bit because I was raised that way and then um when I moved to Dallas when I was like 15 uh my relationship got a lot closer I started you know I wasn't I didn't have a car I wasn't able really to attend church but I was watching it online which like I know it's you're supposed to watch in person it's a biblical command so not attend online like uh, we have to go meet with our local church uh, but I was trying and uh like I got a lot closer and I, I was very successful there so it was uh but I think it was that same story but maybe I don't think I got a little bit into my head but maybe I was like oh I'm doing well again you know like and then something happened I had to leave and my relationship with God just kind of like went away it wasn't that like I was like mad at God or anything but it was just I was busy and I just wasn't prioritizing it and then once I got to Cal Poly and this is honestly why I think uh, why I think I went to Cal Poly and all those little like things that I would see in the moment as being bad and like not being able to go professional like at a younger age uh, I probably wouldn't I tell all my friends all the time I wouldn't be able to I probably wouldn't be as close to God now if I was successful earlier because so I was like oh it's me like I did it um so I wouldn't be as close to God if I had success when I was younger um so then I got to Cal Poly and I was a whole bunch of stuff happened and uh it just led me to God like and like a real like real relationship with God where it was like genuine and I was putting God first no matter what and I still am and uh, it's my priority and it's not because like I have feel like an obligation because I want to mm. um it makes me happy and like I said before like I find my joy in God and makes me not feel anxious about anything. <laughs> you know, I'm relaxed. I know God's in control. And like, what else? Why would I worry if God's in control and he causes all things to work together for good for those who love him? Like, Amen. If, you, if I believe that, like, I shouldn't worry. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. That's good, man. That's great to see how you can look back and, you know, hindsight's 2020 and you see all these difficulties yeah. and, and yet you see God working it for his glory and his fame in your own personal life, um, which is where it all begins. Uh, I love mm-hmm. you sharing there about that, just how it's become your own and how you make time you want to do it. You know, I, I a friend posted something on Instagram recently and it made me laugh because it said, you know, hey, you don't have the excuse to get in God without any time to get into God's word now because all you have is time. And if you get to God's word, maybe time was never the problem. Maybe it was a priority. And that I just, you know, yeah. it kind of resonated with me. I'm like, man, that's funny. But to hear, you know, you saying that, that God's a priority, that's such a encouraging thing. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, yeah. If you will, as we wrap up here, do you mind encouraging us with any other words that you got? Any wisdom? Um, we really appreciate hearing your story so far. Um, I mean... And we were talking about this earlier, but the book of Philippians is about joy and uh, finding your joy in God, and or at least part of it. And um, a verse that stuck out to me is uh, Paul, after all the crazy things that happened, and he said he's been beaten times without number. Like, <laughs> I wonder how many times you have to get beaten to forget how many times you've been beaten. <laughs> so, and he's still having joy in his life, and he's finding it in God. So, like for him it was, he says, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And he's saying, like, if I'm living, like, it's for Christ. And if I'm, if I'm going to die, like, I'm gaining something because I'm going to be with God forever. Mm-hmm. So he couldn't decide, like, he's like, I want to be here and help everyone, like, help bring people to God. But he's also like, I want to be with God. And he's like, I don't know which one to do because he wanted to do both. So that's a kind of a, a cool thing. It's um, something to strive for because, like, that's a relationship I want with God. And I can keep building towards that and trying to be my best and it'll hold me accountable um yeah but not in a bad way but in a good way where it's like I want to do this not I feel like I need to yeah for sure I guess just one follow-up question off of that how how are you living like Christ 
Because clearly you're not dead yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I just, so I think, like, I'm doing everything, like, when Jesus was on his earthly ministry, like, he was doing all things, like, to, like, for the Father and, uh, like, to please him, I guess, because we know he humbled himself. Um, so that's how I'm living my life, like, you know, to please God and uh, to honor him. So that's, like, part of my prayer. Like, we're not supposed to repeat, like, you have, like, repetitive prayers and stuff like that, but I do believe, uh, like, I do ask God to help me honor him in all things I do every day and uh, that's a constant reminder for me to you know this is about God this is about God it's God first God first God first and uh, I think if you or anyone or even me like when that change happens in your life it's God first like even if you think things aren't going your way like they really are like uh, it just makes your life so much better so mm. Man, that's such yeah. a good word, putting, putting God first. Um, I asked you that question because I, I wanted to brag a little bit about how you're, you're working with some guys on your team who maybe don't know Jesus oh. and you're trying to pour into them so that they can know how to put God first and who God is. And um, mm -hmm. I personally, I know you well, and we talk about this a yeah. lot. So I'm just going to share about that for the listeners that I see man okay. using his platform, his love of soccer, um, to share Christ with his teammates. He's a captain at Cal Poly and the freshmen, they look up to him and he's got a freshman who's coming to him, asking him questions about Jesus all the time. Um, well, not all the time now, cause we're all far apart, but uh, back, back over in the, in the winter quarter. So, um, but I encourage all you guys that are listening out there that uh, to take that challenge to heart when many saying, you know, live like Christ and put God first. And it's such a, uh, an incredible journey that we get to be on. So, hey, Manny, do you mind praying for us? And then um, we'll uh, end our interview here. Yeah, for sure. Um, Thanks, bud. Dear God, uh, thank you for bringing us here together today and uh, allowing us to have this technology to communicate and still spread your word, uh, even through this, this uncertain time and uh, where we have to be a little bit isolated. Mm -hmm. um, we want to thank you for just allowing us to live our life, to glorify you and uh, we, I hope that this spreads and people can see like what you've done in me and that it's all to your glory, not mm -hmm. for me at all or for Chris. Like we're just trying to spread your word and we want to honor you in everything we do and uh, help us to continue just spreading your word as much as we can. In Jesus name I pray. Amen. Amen. Yep. Man, thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. I hope you uh, have a great spring semester. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> all right. Bye bud. Yeah, that's it.